words. Hi everybody, this is Ominous for Responsible Gaming. We're going to do a new episode of uh, Ominous Designs. Uh, it's going to be episode 170. Um, I'm going to make this episode, uh, there's going to be a lot of mana making. I've been checking out my articles uh, in the past. I have one that's called All the Bad the Mana. I have one that's called Mana, Mana, Mana. Uh, titles are hard. I will uh, call this uh, episode's weird man. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not that weird, but it is a little bit original. So let's start. Grab my keyboard. Um, so uh, this week uh, I mostly um, have uh, found my designs as well. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty fast. Kind of, we kind of. Um, going to discuss them a little bit, but I kind of have the, the general ID for them. Um, so, let's see. The first one is a creature. It's a creature, and check out this beautiful illustration. Uh, if you can uh, start to see where we're going with that. Uh, if not, that's okay. We're getting there. Um, it's pretty. It's quite pretty. Quite pretty indeed. So, we're going to create an elf, not an hound, um, not a hound. Um, I, for some reason, came up with elf spirit. It is contrived a little bit, but I really like it for some reason. Um, let's have a quick look at... I had a window there together. Um, I want to see if there is, if there are elf spirits. Uh, elf. It's just for, for my own culture at this stage, but um, I'm quite interested. Huh, there's one, one elf spirit. Okay, I like it. I like the idea of it. Um, this is, like I said, it's contrived. It might just not be needed, but, 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 uh, this is actually sort of weird. So check out what I wanted to do with it. What I want is, um, first I'm going to go with the obvious. This is going to tap for mana. Uh, symbol, tap, add green to your mana pool. Um, as crazy as it sounds, I can never remember either if um, if the abilities always end up with a colon. That's that's just something that I just can never fully get in my head. Uh, they do. Um, so, uh, up to there, it is very weird. Uh, notice that I already put the mana cost. Uh, so, and I also want this to be a 1-2, I do believe. So, why? Why? Because... Uh, here, when... What's her face enters the battlefield? Draw a card. How's that? Is that incredible? Is that like super innovative? Is this something you never thought of? Uh, jokes aside. Um, yeah, I like it. Um, it is all in all definitely a powered down. Uh, mana maker because who wants to be making mana on three? But we're trying to make it up with the draw a card. Um, uh, change the helm. Um, now, now to make it sort of worth it um, is. The three mana cost completely uh, killing it. Uh, let's see what uh, what the existing database cards thinks about that. Oh my god! Okay, sorry, sorry, sorry. Here, how's that? You like it? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna start a video for that. I'm very sorry. Uh, <laughs> and here I was like, 
Look at this beautiful picture, isn't it beautiful? Uh, okay. Um, here for your culture too. Uh, the is it Elvish Spirit Guide? Uh, yeah, Elvish Spirit Guide is the only one Elf Spirit that I just uh, looked up just before. Um, so, anyways, back to whatever we're doing. Um, his uh, is three mana way too much for a mana maker. Um, debatable, debatable. Uh, over here, I should have filtered by green. We have Axebane Guardian, which has a pretty different uh, goal in life, um, which is defending uh, well and adding a ton of mana if possible, uh, and also fixing. Uh, this is not what I want. Arc Druid is just a rare mana maker. Um, it would appear that nobody ever thought of a correct use for two mana, three mana mana makers. Um, three mana for this one is also different because adding two could be relevant, like you're really trying to ram big. Um, you're not so much accelerating, I would say, in the early game as ramping. With a big R. If you catch my drift, uh, this guy is the same. He has three, even though he pay one, so he has two. This guy fixes, and is a two-one. See the problem. Oh, look at this! This guy for three adds two as well. It, it would seem that uh, um, we have agreed that uh, adding one mana when you cost three sucks uh, in terms of mana making um, just by the fact that it never it never existed um, I mean and we know that ideally you want your mana maker to cost one uh, if it costs two it's a slower one um, so does it make this card terrible like having a having a poor body and only ramping for for one when you already uh, cost three it's complicated like i i would not want i don't think i would want to have even a one one for two that draws you a card because hell like one one for two is perfectly serviceable as a ramp it's not great it possibly not great at all actually but well okay <laughs> let's put it that way a one one for two draws you a card exists. Yeah, I should have started with that. Um as well, Elvish Mystic. The thing was Elvish no, not Elvish Mystic. Uh Visionary. Uh Visionary. So the thing with this card is it is basically for combo sake. Just about, or if you really want to play elves, so its own value comes from the fact that it costs two, I believe. So you can't just go, oh, one one for two door card is fine. So then I'll uh, pay one more and make it make mana. Like the base that you st that that you start with. Is also is already valuable only because it costed two to begin with. Um, could we make a two one draws a card adds mana? This is starting to to get pretty pretty nifty. It goes in a lot of different directions. I would definitely grant that, but I mean, heck, a two one for three draws a card. What's the um, what's the guy? There's a guy that's pretty recent. Is it a Cans um, that has that is a blue blue guy? Because I I don't want to make cantrips that are cantrip creature that are too good either. And sometimes I mean I guess nobody ever talked about this this dude, but sometimes you don't realize that if you just make your cantrip creature barely good. It is going to be too good, I think. Potentially. Um, 
yeah <laughs> blue cans of turkey it is not gonna be enough um it is a creature and it says draw that might already narrow it down a bunch um and it says die as well i think it draws your card when it dies um there's definitely this guy well i guess this guy is already interesting it's a one one prowess draws you a card which is very very close to it's better than the visionary well mm, different close to better uh the youthful scholar is a two two for four oh it draws you two card man okay all right and still nobody really talked about this guy i do not think um Yeah, I don't know. Um, balance is hard, right? Balance is real hard. I do think, as far as mana making is concerned, the three drop mana maker is. Eh. Oh man, though, what what is the unicorn? Um, unicorn, opaline unicorn. Add one mana to any color. One, two, for three. It was bad, but it was. Playable. I don't know how bad my my decks were, but I think sometimes I consider it was playable. Um, but it's mana fixer too. This is great value. It's not really like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm still gonna ramp with this. Um, so I think I would run it out, see what people think. Um, three mana cantrip gives you a two one that makes mana. It's very good. It's, I mean, yeah, the value is there. I don't know if there is a proper job for this guy, but like, what do you get for three mana that can trips? Like, you get, you know, tap target creature it doesn't untap, or I don't know. You don't get a two one that taps for mana. You you don't get that very often or ever. So it might even be too good as is. The, the the only thing that saves it as a not so busted design is that it tries to do a lot of different things and it's pretty weird. Um so maybe I don't know, maybe you don't need to be able to attack with it. But I still kinda want it to be a one two. Um because it's there's not much uh harm doing that and it kind of just makes it makes it look look better and doesn't make it like I'm a mana elf but I could I cost two more. Though even though you still draw a card, so Yeah, I don't know. I would probably do this after all. I mean heck. You're paying three mana, you can trip, all you get is an elf that makes mana and you should already be happy. Um Yeah. Let's try this. Yeah, let's try this. Because otherwise, also, um, you get the uh, Golden Hind uh, kind of thing. The Golden Hind is, I believe, a 2-1. Two 2-1 one. Two one for 2 makes a mana. And now you're going to tell me... And it's it's a very serviceable card. You're not going to tell me you add one colorless mana and, and all of a sudden you get a, a card back, right? That that sounds that sounds too much. So I don't know. It's so yeah. It's probably a one two. It might even be a one one. It might even be too good as a as a cantrip uh, gives you a mana elf. But let's ru let's run it out uh, and see what people say about it. So that's one. Now the second one. The second one is pretty cool. Um, the second one is a land. Hence I'm copying. Just just don't pay attention. Um. Oh wait. Yeah. Okay. I. I was. I'm. I'm. I'm wondering if I should have kept the illustration for last. Um. Uh, do I want a person? An animal? Even doesn't even look like an animal. It looks like it's got something on its back, so it's probably uh, domesticated. But um. Do I want an animal on my land? I think it's fine. It looks very good. It's a very nice illustration. Uh, this doesn't have a mana cost. Is a land. 
uh, something boneyard probably. I have to check. Oops. Is there boneyards? Uh, animal boneyard, boneyard worm, submerged boneyard. Awesome. I like this word boneyard, boneyard even though it sounds weird when you say it a lot. Um, mm, 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 mm. Okay, so this is going to be pretty simple. Check it out. Add. <laughs> there you go. This to your mana pool for each land card. There's a hint in your graveyard. What do you think? Um, so. I mean, what you should think right away is, how can I destroy this design? How can I break it? Um, and that's what everybody's going to think. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, obviously you have fetch lands. And that's just about it, because you, you can't really build around... Um, well, no, there's several things. There is graveyard. There is um, so there is reliably you can have fetch lands and power discard, but also um, there is like milling yourself and dredge, and all of a sudden this looks kind of crazy. Because if you're able to mill yourself a bunch, um, this is gonna make a million mana. This is gonna, I mean, I could be wrong, but this would create a brand new type of decks. Like, the guys, the Tron kind of decks who think they can mill themselves for mana. Or, or, or it would just get into uh, uh, decks that have lots of fetch lands or a bunch of meal for whatever reason and start making them a ton of mana too. Now. Is it too much? Get new headphones, Greg. Get new headphones. Um, it's very unfortunate. This thing was charging forever, and I've used it for like what, one hour, two hour stops. Um, that's very sad. At least I'm getting good at this. Uh, usually I would just leave it plugged during the stream, but I thought I was safe. This is a nice stream, huh? This is uh, all sorts of things going wrong. Um, so, yeah, it is it is abusable. This thing is abusable. Um, how bad is it that it's abusable? Let's say you don't really like. Let's say in um, well, I was gonna say limited. <laughs> I was gonna say, let's say you don't have fetch lands in your limited, but it doesn't matter. Fetch lands are rare. You'll never use that. Uh, you can, like, you can have as many evolving wilds and fetch lands as you want in limited. Uh, you probably still don't want to run this card. In standard, though, let's say you don't have fetch lands. Heck, even with fetch lands, it's in standard. It's gonna make big mana, but you cannot run it that fast. No, I don't know. Maybe it would be busted in standard. Because um, in control decks, you could go, you know, put one or one or two of those, and and then plan on on casting being big planeswalkers and 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 big defensive spells, just by virtue of having 
a ton of fetch lands in your deck. But I mean, um, how's it called? Uh, the Nyx, the Shrine to Nyx, Nyxdos, does exist. It is limited. Uh, one thing that people have done uh, in the past uh, is the exact same thing as Nyxdos, uh, which good luck to me spelling it. Yay! Um, they add a, an activated cost of two, so you could go, you could do the same. You could add one or two, and then all of a sudden, if you have one, if you have one thing in your graveyard, it doesn't make any mana. Uh, it also, oh yeah, this is very good. It also prevents the things like dredge-ish uh, strategies from uh, going. Um, you know, I don't have any land apart from this, and yet uh, I'm making a million mana because now you now all of a sudden you need um, a mana to start making mana. Um, is there a space? I guess there's a space. Um, so I kind of like that. Uh, now is it one or is it two? I think you could push it and make it one. Uh, because yeah, because you need to, like it's dead if you don't have something in your graveyard. It uh, is also dead if you have one, because you pay one to make one, and it doesn't fix anything. But then it starts making mana if you have two. Which makes it, oh yeah, and uh, see that's weird. Yeah, I forgot about that. That that <laughs> you can expect your land to make you at least one mana, right? So this land would be dead if you have nothing in your graveyard. It would start being a land and a bad one because it makes colorless if you had already something in your yard. It would make two mana, which is better than a land, obviously. If you had two things in your graveyard, and then it starts being busted. So the downside is there. Uh, the downside is really there. Uh, if you don't, even if you put no uh, mana cost, it only makes a colorless mana if you have something in your yard, which sucks. And it makes colorless, which ultimately is not fantastic. Now the abusableness coin term. The abusable ner uh, 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 abusableness uh, is there, definitely. And just for that reason, you, you might very well want an activation cost. Uh, even though it's still abusable, at least it won't be like, I have no mana, and now all of a sudden I have a million mana abusable. Uh, in all fairness, like Dredge or, or, or whatever, uh, we'll still be able to go, here is a mana that I made one way or another. I don't remember how Dredge makes its mana. Uh, and now have a million. Uh, that being said, this is not the strategy they use usually. So I don't know. It is a highly brickable design. It is a highly brickable design. Is it acceptable? Um, something I wonder is, so the, the most busted lens are uh, uh, Tolarian Academy. Um, Tolarian Academy is actually probably just about down everywhere. Uh, it is banned in Legacy and restricted in Vintage. That that's pretty rough. Uh, Cradle, on the other hand, might be uh, uh, still banned in um, Vintage. I would say uh, Legacy. No, legal, legal. Okay, not even restricted. I, I yeah. Okay, um, but yeah, Gaius Cradle is, is kind of different. And the thing is, with things that, this you need stuff on your board, right? Creatures, what's more? People don't play much m that many creatures when they play in busted environments, and creature can die. On the other hand, artifacts, harder to kill. And artifacts extremely played a lot and very cheap ones in formats like Vintage and Legacy. So that's why um, uh, Tolarian Academy is, is so crazy. Um, our card over here lands in your yard. Well, first you have Fetch Lands, 
and otherwise um, you can just mill yourself. Whatever is in your graveyard is much harder to interact. You need specific hate cards to uh, prevent it. You need uh, your opponent to be like, I'm going to exile your graveyard. So it's much harder to interact with. Which is why, even though this is not very impressive to look at, it is probably extremely powerful. Um, you know what? I, I just, I just want to know how broken it is. I just want to know how broken it is. Um, I don't know. I know somebody can do something that's unintended with it. You can just meal yourself and make a million mana. But I don't know that it's a good strategy. I don't know that it's going to make it like, oh, look at this completely ridiculous combo. It is diff like like I said, <laughs> like I've been <laughs> dancing around for a while. It is very dangerous. You can do stupid things with this, most likely. But which one? I don't know. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm also going to put it out there to, to have people tell me how broken it is. Uh, this one, uh, this, this one is most, is more like, do you think it's too powerful? It won't be world shattering, the, the comment I will, I will have on, on it. Uh, some people will say this sucks and they will be wrong, I think. And some people will say this is too much for your mana, and they might be right. Some people will say this is amazing, and they'll be my friends. I want to be creepy and stare at you for five seconds. Like that. Boneyard, on the other hand, some people might say Boneyard plus untap plus mill and infinite mana. That might actually be it. But if it's three. If it's three cards, uh, three card combo, uh, also known to be like you can do whatever in in Magic for with three cards combo. Granted that this one is only a land. Whatever, I spend enough time on this. Now, before we leave, um, I'm on to well, I have news. Uh, no, let's do the, let's do the extra. I have a, a little extra over here, uh, and I don't think I use it in an article. Um, so I'm going to be giving it to you for free. I created this entry for a, a contest on the Facebook group that I'm part of. And it is Frost by Dagger. And it's it's fun. Um, you got your 3-drop artifact uh, equipment with 3 mana to equip. And it gives plus 1, plus 1. And then whenever equipped creature blocks or become blocked by a creature, tap that creature. It doesn't tap the receipts. Next con uh, controller, next contest step. So... Yeah, you make your little creature a little bigger, and as soon as it touches something else, uh, blocks or block, uh, get gets blocked or blocks it, it will tap it for a turn. Uh, it's very fun. Um, I don't know. It might be that you can equip it for two. I don't particularly think so. Um, this effect turns out to be very annoying uh, because um, if you make it, uh, if you put it on a creature that has a good toughness. Uh, then, like, let's say you have a 2-4, maybe. All of a sudden you have a 3-5, which actually already kind of blocks and kills creatures, but uh, you could even have a 1-4. If you have a 1-4 or 1-5 that uh, frost breath all creatures, then your opponent is kind of screwed, because they can just attack into it, you block it without your creature dying, and theirs don't untap. Very annoying. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, if he was cheaper, and maybe even at 3, when it's already on your creature, you can attack with a plus one plus one that if their creature block uh, and not die, then they'll get tapped for one turn and that sucks. And then you can go and put it back on one of your defender to be doing the, the block and tap. You can even trump with that thing and the big guy uh, will stay tapped. So it's pretty sweet. So he, he, might, he might be okay at 3-3. Three, three. I don't know. Uh, people liked it at 3-3, three, three, so... I guess he might be balanced. Um, so that's the extra card, and it's kind of fun. Now, for the big news, I'm going to be off for two weeks, most likely three. I'm going on holidays. I'm going, uh, full disclosure, in India. I don't think I will have neither the time or the equipment uh, or the resources or the anything um, to be doing articles and videos and whatnot. 
So I'm going to be off for two or three weeks. And that's just the way it is. That's just the way it is. I'll try and uh, figure out some some pretty cool stuff for when I'm back. But you'll have you'll have your you have your couple weeks of quiet, and then I will be back all energized. So that's it for today. Uh, this was episode hundred and seventeenth of Ominous Designs on Responsible Gaming. I'm Ominous, and I'm telling you, see you in a couple weeks. Have a great time.